guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to look into today is a case of a rising star deciding that the life wasn't for him, going off and doing what he wanted to do, and then sadly losing his life. And to somebody who, well, you wouldn't think, well, you'd hope wouldn't have done it, but they did. It is a case of Bison Daly. And he did very well for himself as well. Let's jump in. Bison Dele was actually born Brian Carson Williams on the 6th of April in 1969 in Fresno, California to father Eugene and mother Patricia. Now Eugene Williams, as he was called, was actually um, a really famous singer. He was in the group called the Platters from the 1950s and Patricia worked as a teacher and a counsellor. Sadly, his parents wouldn't stay together forever. They divorced. When he was quite young, actually, um, and him and his brother, Kevin Williams, who would also later change his name, would then be primarily raised by their mother. She would meet another man and I'm not sure if she actually got married to him, but um, they end up ended up not lasting too. And so they didn't really have much of a father figure in their lives. Now, as a child, Brian, as he was known then, was very intelligent. He was also quite a sensitive child and he was quite artistic too and he had um, a very big interest in that. He eventually, <coughs> excuse me, would become, have a growth spurt and become taller and taller and was really good at sports and so he was sort of heading towards the way of basketball now he never really liked basketball like he never had a passion for it he never really wanted to do it he felt more of obliged to do it because of his sheer size because he was a really tall guy and a really well built guy and so he ended up going into that even though he didn't really like the sport at all you know he was quite a deep guy you loved music and he really enjoyed philosophy too now he adored his brother but his brother also felt like quite insecure around brian because kevin wasn't he was sort of built the same as brian and it was said that you know they were very similar however he was very introverted he was nothing like his brother at all and he just really, their relationship really struggled from that because he always felt like he was in, his, Kevin always felt like he was in his brother's shadow. And so that's really not a good thing to be. But I guess it is what it is, isn't it? Anyway, Brian Williams changed his name to Bison Daly, like I said. And it was to go back to more of his roots. And that's why he wanted to change his name. And Kevin would actually change his name to Miles DeBoard. So that's how I'm going to refer to them from now on. Still the same people, but they chose to change their names. Bison would go into different teams in the NBA and he had a lot of struggles in his life. He suffered from anxiety. He got diagnosed with clinical depression. He did a lot of things like... I read that in one game. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of the teams because I'm not into baseball. I don't really know about all of that. So I'm, he was in all this, these different teams, okay? I'm just, that's, that's how we're going to do it. But in one team that he was in, he ended up fainting whilst he was fainting in the middle of, I don't know if it was a game or practice, and just dropping. Um, he did lots of things like that that would end him up on the bench and, and stuff but when he did play he was quite good again his heart was never in the game because he just didn't really like it but he was a good player so he carried on now he did actually play for the chicago bulls in 1997 during the championship season and that was an important role he also played with um michael jordan for a while and like i said he was super successful Bison actually changed his name in 1998. I just wanted to mention that because I didn't mention the date. Um, but he signed up for a really big deal. He signed up for the 
the Pistons and he would become one of the highest paid, pay, paid players in the team. He signed up for seven years and I believe it was a 50 million contract. 50 million dollar contract. He decided to retire after a little bit and he walked away from 36 million dollars so that's how long he had left on his contract that's how much money he still would have earned over the years from from it but he walked away because he'd had enough he wanted to retire he was 30 years old at this point and he never really liked the game he suffered a lot he spent a lot of time not a lot of time but he spent time on the bench he also did suffer with his mental health because on one occasion he was on a plane and he tried to open the emergency exit door whilst it was up in the air which would have killed everyone um luckily he didn't manage to do it so that was how much he struggled with his mental health i believe he had made attempts on himself before and his mother confirmed that he had made attempts as well so yeah he just really really struggled and i guess trying to force yourself to do a game that you're never really passionate about and that you're really good at but you don't want to do when you're suffering from things like that he just wanted to do what he wanted to do in life and so he decided to retire and that's what he did he did exactly what he wanted to do he traveled got his pilot license he played music all these different instruments that he really loved to do he went in the Australian outback and he learned to sail there and he then went on to purchase a catamaran it's not a catamaran sorry it's a catamaran oh dear a catamaran which is like a quite a decent sized boat I think it cost him a hundred thousand maybe I think I read somewhere and he went on traveling some more then in 2002 it was the 6th of July he decides that he is him and his girlfriend Serena Callan are gonna go on this trip so they headed from Tahiti and they had the dude that was piloting the boat. Piloting the boat? Captain of the boat? Anyway, he was called Bertrand Saldo. Saldo. Bertrand Saldo, sorry. And his brother also decided that he was going to come along. Now, it wasn't ever, he wasn't invited and he'd not seen him for like four years. And he only ever showed up when he wanted money because... His brother would give him money a lot. He was successful. He was rich. Miles would come along and ask for money all the time. So, I forgot. They actually called um, his boat, his catamaran. I got it right this time. Hakuna Matata. Which means, no worries. So, you can imagine the kind of lifestyle that he wanted. So, anyway. These, he didn't really want his brother to go. But he was like, okay then, I guess. So, him, his brother girlfriend and the captain of the boat all set off and whilst he was sailing near to tahiti 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 the boat vanished and everyone on it also vanished and then one person returned to, returned to the u.s alone which was now my yours oh gosh why can i not speak today and obviously everyone was wondering where bison was he wasn't answering anything no one had seen him for days, no one had heard from him from days, and then suddenly Miles turns up in the US and Bison is nowhere to be found. So they were suspicious straight away. Now, I also forgot to mention on the 8th of July, there was satellite calls tried to be made from the boat. And that was done four times. Now, the people on the boat had previously kept in touch with people in their lives family members other important things like the banks and other aspects of the life and there was just nothing from them then like i said miles was the only one that boarded that that returned so on the 20th he brought in the boat and he was the only one that came off it they obviously questioned him but he said that you know he was fine and that there was nothing to worry about basically he just wanted to, I guess, go off the radar for a bit, whatever. Came up with some excuse. By September, um, Bison resurfaced in a way because somebody was going around using his passport and trying to buy $150,000 worth of gold from a jewelers. So when this tried to go through, his bank thought this was not, like not something bison would have done so he checked it all and 
it was written out on a check which Bison had not used for like five years so he'd not written out a check for five years so it was suspicious so he flagged it and sent it to the police and the police began looking into it and they decided to do like a sting operation to find out who this person was that was pretending to be Bison or if it was in fact himself you know because maybe it could have been anyway that happened on the 6th of September 2002 it was in Phoenix and guess who was there waiting to get this gold it was Miles it was later found out that Mexican police said that he was staying in a hotel in Mexico and two days before that the Hakuna Matata had actually been found it had been the name had been trying to have been changed so the plates had been sort of stuck back over them and this boat also had bullet holes in it well patched up it looked like the tendency to be patched up but again it had a different name and it was left in Tahiti. Around about the same time, Miles then decided to ring his mom and tell her that he didn't hurt Bison and that he would not survive in prison. So they did arrest him and, well, not arrest him. Well, they might have arrested him, but they spoke to him about this, right? This gold and impersonating his brother. And he said that he wasn't actually impersonating his brother. That his brother had asked him to buy this gold and so given him the passport to use as thingy. So they had no evidence to prove otherwise before they started properly looking into everything and found out about this boat and whatever else. So they let him go because they had no other choice. Now, this is when like the FBI got involved and apparently French authorities and they began looking into everything and they found out that he had actually bought $200 worth of weights and it was suspected that he had used this to weigh down the bodies of all three people that he killed, including his brother not long after a police report came in a large man was found on unconscious and he was taken to hospital now it turned out that this man was miles and he had had an insulin overdose he was taken straight to hospital they tried everything they could but on the 27th of september 2002 he passed away now his girlfriend did actually come forward and say that he had um told her that him and his brother had a fight and in the process they'd knocked his girl his brother's girlfriend and she hit her head on something and instantly died now the captain of the boat wanted to report this to the police and bison didn't want to get caught for it so he attacked him and killed him and then turned on his brother miles so miles in self-defense killed bison and that was how it all went down he said that he shot his brother and threw him overboard and then fled but obviously it was self-defense self-defense the problem with that was when they had found the boat at this point and so they checked the boat where her head would have smashed into whatever that killed her there would have been blood there was nothing there would have been other evidence of a struggle or whatever there was absolutely nothing but they did find these bullet holes so basically he thought it was presumed that miles just uh there was no blood or anything on the boat i don't think so but i don't i'm not sure about these bullet holes where they were situated i have no idea however whether he just fired them off as warning shots to make them do what he wanted it's widely believed anyway that he made them get into the water at gunpoint and then maybe killed them there or left them and obviously they would have died or he shot them all but then there was no blood got them in the water shot them or got them to tie them i don't know but he bought these weights too which they tied to him so they he could have tied them to the bodies to dunk them but i, I do find it a bit strange how there was not really anything on the boat i suppose though if he tied it to them dumped them overboard and then shot them or even didn't shoot them and just whatever anyway he was the only one who knew what happened to bison and what actually truly happened uh, and he died so there you go now it was said that previously the brothers did fight a lot and even a crew member from i don't know if it was that ship or a different ship um ended up actually leaving because he was just fed up of them fighting so who knows i'd like to know your opinions on it do you think that he was just so jealous of all his money and whatnot they had a fight and he just killed them all or do you think it was the way he said it personally i just think that he was it was the first one really 
But yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts on it. That is the end of this case. It is really heartbreaking that after all that time, he earned all that money and was finally doing what he really wanted to do by some absolutely loving life. And then he got it all taken away from him. It is so heartbreaking. But yeah, that's the end of this case. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to. And until next time, bye.